In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a responsive web design without media queries. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a project that I'm currently working on. In this web design, I have several profile cards on the page. I already have a full tutorial that shows you how I created this entire profile card. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. Just to go over the structure of the page, first I have the head element with the font that I'm using. Then I have the body tag. And within the body tag, I have a div class of wrapper grid. This wrapper holds all of the containers on the page. Then within that wrapper grid, I have the class of container, which includes this banner image, this circle profile image, this H1 element of the person's name, a brief description, and then a follow button. In this design, I repeated the card six times. In the CSS, I declared some variables in the root and set styling properties for the body, container, and all the images. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this responsive without any media queries. So if we look back in the HTML, I have this div class of wrapper grid, which I'm currently not referencing in the CSS. So right now, there is not a grid implemented on the website. So I can increase or decrease the size of the website, and that will determine the size of each card. We want to control this a bit more so the cards always look good regardless of the size of the screen. So in order to do this, I'm going to take advantage of this wrapper grid and add properties to it. So in the CSS, I'm going under the body and adding the wrapper grid class. And in this wrapper grid, first I'm going to add a display of grid. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have a whole crash course video that goes over all the basics of it. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. So when I set the display to grid, it really doesn't change the structure of the page. I need to define the columns or the rows. So in order to do that, I'm going to write grid template columns, which will then define the number of columns on the page. Now there are multiple ways that you can define the columns. For example, if I write one FR, that will create one column that is one FR in size, which is what we have right now. So if I increase or decrease the window size, the card will take up as much space as it needs. But then if I write one FR and then one FR, it creates two columns that are each one FR in size, which we can see here. So now as I increase or decrease the size, I see that there are always two columns. Now there's a shorthand way to write this. Instead of writing one FR twice, I can write repeat and then two one FR, which basically means create two columns that are each one FR in size. FR is the fractional unit used for grid. So now if I increase or decrease, it still retains the two columns. One way to accomplish responsive design is with media queries. So in that way, I can say that in this view, I want there to be two columns. However, when the screen size changes, I want three columns to become visible. I'll just represent that here. So at the bottom, I would write at media screen and I would set the min width to a particular value. So here I'm going to set the min width to 600 pixels. So when the screen size is at 600 pixels, I want this design to change in some way. So I would reference that wrapper grid because that is what we're going to change. And within that wrapper grid, I'm going to set the grid template columns to something different. So here I might set it to repeat three one FR. So in this way, when the screen is at a minimum width of 600 pixels, I want three columns to appear. So as I increase the size, when it hits that threshold, now three columns are visible. But I'm going to show you how to make this responsive without media queries. So up here, I'm going to go to my grid template columns. And here I set it repeat to two columns at one FR. So in this way, we are setting the number of columns to two. 
But in order to make it truly responsive, I want the number of columns to be dependent on the size of the screen instead of hard coding two columns. We can see that when the screen becomes too small, each card becomes too narrow, and we want to avoid a situation like this. So instead of hard coding two columns, I'm going to delete that and write auto fit. In this way, it will automatically fit the number of columns so it's appropriate for the size of the page. However, as you can see, it increases the size of this card until this media query comes into play. So I'm actually going to take this media query and comment it out. So going back up to the top, I have that repeat auto fit to 1FR, which right now it looks like it's not even doing anything. But this is where the magic is going to happen. So instead of writing 1FR, I'm going to set each card to a particular width. So here I'll set it to 20 REM. So in this way, I'm saying I always want the card to be 20 REM. So if I decrease the size, or if I increase the size, it will always remain 20 REM. Now, as I increase the size of the page, the cards will fill up if there's enough available room. I want the items to be placed in the center of the screen, so I'm going to set a justify content and set that to center. Now, as the page increases in size, if there is enough room, the other cards will go into place. So in this way, it is completely responsive without any media queries. Now let's say you didn't always want it to be 20 REM, maybe you want it to be a little bit flexible in its size. So instead, you could write min max here, which will then set a minimum and a maximum value for the card size. So maybe for a minimum, let's set it to 10 REM and a maximum to 20 REM. So in that way, if there's enough room on the page, it will go to 20 REM, but if there's not enough room, it will go to 10 REM. For this example, I'm just going to leave it as 20 REM. The last thing I'm going to show you is the difference between auto fit and auto fill. So here we have a repeat auto fit, which basically says fit as many columns as necessary on the page. There's another option that we have with this and it's called auto fill. Now, because we have six cards on the page and they're all quite large, we don't really see the difference between auto fit and auto fill. So instead, I'm going to reduce the size of each card to five REM. This will make the cards really small, but in this way, you'll be able to see the demonstration. So right now I have it set to repeat auto fill, which will fill the page with columns. So if I increase the size of this window, it's technically creating more columns here, even if it's empty. So if I increase the size of this window, you can see that the cards look like they're placed on the left side of the page, although I do have them set to justify center. So what's happening right now is that if there's enough room on the page, the grid is actually creating these other columns here, even if they're empty. So although we don't have enough cards to fill up that entire first row, it is actually still creating them and all of the cards are placed in the center. Now for contrast, instead of setting it to auto fill, I'm going to go back to auto fit. In that way, the grid only creates the number of columns that are necessary, and it does still have that justify content in the center. So it is not creating excess columns in this example. It is only creating the number of columns that it needs for the content on the page. So I have six cards, so it's making six columns, versus autofill will continue to make columns, regardless of the content that's on the page. So you can choose between auto fit or auto fill depending on the type of project that you're working on. In this example, I'm going to go back to 20 REM and set it to auto fit. So there you go. That's how I made a responsive web design without media queries. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.